Apparently, this season of anime is pretty much dominated by rom-com. And I got a video here called A Comprehensive Guide to Romance Anime from Mr. Lunar Equinox. I already know this video is going to be good. Give him a like. Go check out his channel if you haven't. Let's see what he has to say, though. All great romance anime start with a slow narration overlooking the city that quotes some Shakespearean poem. To be or not to be, that is the question. This is one of... Get it? To be or not to be, because to be ass, to be ass, to be ass. Or not to be. Even to be ass is not enough to save this anime from the shitty fucking scheduling that just like ruined the, the hype and the momentum of weekly anime watchers. Such a sad thing of what happened to this anime, man. That is the question. This is one of those things I can never forget. Like the day my parents died in that horrific accident. And the day, the day I met you. No! This is, this is a uh, mob seca. Leon Bartufartu looking at the arranged marriage, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember this shit. The day I met you. I just spent the last few weeks watching a lot of romance anime. Shikimori. All right, I got something to say about this fucking anime. You know why Dangers in My Heart is better than Shikimori's Not a Cutie? You know why that's the case? Because Shikimori is, again, another static waifu that is just perfect. And you are supposed to self-insert your loser ass into the main character's shoes. And she's basically the perfect waifu. Dangers in my heart doesn't do that. Yamada is her own unique person and an individual with her own feelings and ambitions and insecurities. That makes us realize that she's not just fan service. She's a real unique individual. Shikimori is a cutie. I don't think it had that kind of fucking... I don't need to shit on it. I, I, I actually enjoyed watching this. I really enjoyed Hachimitsu. But, you know, I, I'm starting to realize that a lot of these rom-coms, most of the girls, they're just static, flat, just, not flat, extremely busty, but static, perfect characters that just exist for your loser ass to self-insert yourself into the guy, man. Anime, even fully covering the most popular romance anime of all time on my channel. Sort of online. Also, I could create a... <laughs> SAO is the most popular romance anime. I mean, there is a lot of romance, I guess, in SAO where people get caught. Yo, we need to watch these SAO videos. I didn't realize how many SAO content he had. We're gonna watch every one of them. I will go through every one of them as we finish off Arisization. There's actually a lot I just realized. Line. Also, I could create a comprehensive guide to help you understand the complex subject of romance anime. All the right. The first thing you need to understand is that- Is that confessions will never happen. Well, that's a lie. But most of the times, right? You need to just stall for as long as possible by having these episodes where it seems like the guy and the girl is getting closer and closer and closer. But psych, it's actually never enough. But what is the difference between good and bad? I see a bunch of etchy on the left and a bunch of actual wrong come on the right. The types of romance anime, since they're all created with different audiences in mind. Some for men, women, women with daddy issues, women with... <laughs> women with daddy issues as B-stars? <laughs> what the fuck? Okay. Women with more daddy issues. But let's start with the vanilla tag. A romance between just two people, the way it was meant to be. No heartbreaks, no drama, just two people falling in love with each other. Okay. And if you enjoy these types of romance- Vanilla, I bet your favorite ice cream flavor is vanilla, bro. Romances, there's only two of them, so unlucky. The lottery romance, put all your- I hear Horimiya is actually pretty good. I, I do hear that Horimiya is pretty good and it's not really the case. Angel Next Door is another anime. I know that he's making a joke right now, but these type of rom-coms, honestly, they're not even rom-coms. They're more or less just roms, right? Not my favorite. It's just diabetes, just, you know, just ooh, 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 I love you. I love you so much, you know, that kind of stuff. I, I need more calm than rom. That's why I prefer animes like... Kaguya Sama Love is War if we're gonna be fucking around with ramen animes. Of them, so unlucky. The lottery romance. Put all your bets on black and pray that the protagonist chooses your choice. Weird that option shouldn't have nice. been there. You often think that you're watching a vanilla anime until the author adds a bit of spice. Infidelity. The love oh. dodecahedron, where multiple people fight. Basically multiple girls. Almost being like a harem. Almost like a harem. Basically different girls showing up to, you know, cuck the other girls. Reality. The love dodecahedron, where multiple people fight over one. Which is an analogy for how people in real life fight each other over which 2D drawing is better. Kurumi over Toka? Sure. But Origami on the left is better in both two. Yo, I'm dying on that hill. Shh, don't worry. You were always the right option. The probably Who is this girl? I don't recognize her. I don't know who this girl is. 
the probably created by Makoto movies. Since these are all set on a timer and less than two hours, the protagonist must run away from home, fall in love with a complete stranger, just for them to disappear. So this is your name, right? And then the other one, I think, is the one where everything is being submerged by water. Makoto Shinkai seems to know only one sort of storytelling. <laughs> where they all run away near the end. A complete stranger, just for them to disappear for 90% of the movie. Which mirrors the real world, where you fall in love with- Susan, yeah, I, I, I just told you. Are you stupid? What did I just say? This is your name. And then the other one, this one, is the water one. This one is different, but this one is the water one, right? Just for them to disappear for 90% of the movie, which mirrors the real world, where you fall in love with someone and they disappear too. Masochist. That means you got ghosted. That means the date went so fucking bad that they don't even see you as a viable candidate. Move on. Just move on. Where you fall in love with someone and they disappear too. Masochist romance. Sometimes you just want to watch a romance anime that will tear you apart, make you cry, and leave you awake at night thinking, I wonder how much life insurance they had. If you enjoy these other activities, I recommend. I will never watch these bullshit animes, dude. I don't watch anime to fucking feel bad about myself. So many people are such fucking losers and so fucking devoid of any feelings in life that the only way they can feel something is by watching shit like this. Where it's such a depressing story that it makes you cry your heart out. Because you don't feel anything in real life. This is the only way you can feel something. I look, I have pity upon you, bro. I think you're fucking losers. I will never watch this garbage, even if it gets voted in. Fuck you. And are majoring in journalism, ordering food from McDonald's and expecting it all to be there, and waiting for a good Overwatch update that doesn't come from a website with Spice. Rom-coms. They funny. Yeah, they funny, and this is the only type of romance animes that I can fuck with. I prefer romance stories when it's more calm than rom. I don't want a drawn out melodramatic bullshit drama where it's just like people feeling bad about their fucking feelings, bro. If I wanted to do that, I just live in real life. I'm watching animes to have fun, not to feel sad about my fucking life, bro. Why am I forcing myself to watch dramas that's gonna make me question my life? We already have that in real life. Isn't real life already fucking sad enough for you losers? Why the fuck do you need to go out and seek even more content that makes you feel even more depressed? Maybe the idea is, is in order to feel a little bit better about your sad ass life, you watch something that's even more sad, and then relative to your own life, it feels better. Maybe that's what's going on. Moms, they funny. The BLTs, surprisingly. Yuri. Yuri, Takina, Chisato, I love Licorice Recoil. LTs. Surprisingly, most of these characters appear to be straight at the beginning, but then... They're they gay. Are. These typically have two roles. You can either be a top or the one who takes it in the bottom. Yet, for some unknown reason, they yeah. almost always share one key detail with each other. What is it? Well, the way you were looking at me made it clear you wanted to be touched. Oh! But if I said it, get him out of my courtroom! Magical... Listen, that's only a viable because it's anime cute girls, man. If you were a cute anime girl, you could say this shit too. If you're actually a VTuber model, you could probably get away with it. If I said it, get him out of my courtroom. Magical fantasy romances. For what? females, these often take place in a more dignified era. Have we, basically, Bryn, have we ever seen a magical fantasy romance? No, we have. Uh, Elf Bride. Elf Bride, right? Elf Bride, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the example we made where it's like, oh, finally, you know what the winning formula is? You put romance in a fucking native isekai setting instead of like a high school setting. Yeah, Elf Bride was great. Romances. For females, these often take place in a more dignified era where they would fall in love with a high ranking noble. And even like uh, Unnamed Memories, right? Unnamed Memories is another one of these. Pull and become a lady. Just don't let the Snow White actress find out about these. She's not Yikes. gonna be safe with the prince and she's not gonna be dreaming about true love. For males, they take place in a more ma So fucking cringe, bro. So fucking cringe how proud they are thinking that they're so different by trying to be all DEI and inclusive to the point that you push away from all the fans and people just fucking hate you. Gonna be dreaming about true love. For males, they take place in a more magical world because they took the word fantasy Isika. literally. Unfortunately, this usually... Yep, slavery. Slavery. The only way that losers that watch this garbage can relate to it is if there's some sort of power fantasy where the only way you can get a girl is this why you buy them. Isekai and slavery, nothing like it, bro. Balls purchasing women from the supermarket. Ah, <sighs> hard to believe she's already 18. Ro oh, Raftalia. Oh, I love Raftalia, man. What Raftalia represents and how she stood there for Naofumi through season one and beyond. 
was truly a beautiful story. But if you take a step back and think about how this girl is a fucking slave raccoon girl that we bought. <laughs> well, what? What do you want to do? You want to just leave her in the fucking cage? What do you want? You want her to just rot in the cage? It's just participating in the slave trade is bad. <laughs> I know. Fuck you want to do about it? Abolish the slave system? Actually, yeah. You know, why can't Rudy and Naofumi abolish the slave system if they feel so... If they feel such a strong justice against it. They have the powers to do so, right? Don't they? They're, they're like main characters, bro. But, you know, handling those kind of just social issues is not the main point of these isekais. I believe she's already 18. Romance anime created for a female audience or romance that includes spies. While men just Yuri. get edging. These involve a lot of female. <laughs> Make a baby with me. Oh, okay, Zenobia. Okay. Get edging. These involve a lot of female internal monologue, something that doesn't often appear in male romance anime for obvious reasons. When you close your eyes, you aren't really closing your eyes. You're just staring at your eyelids. What? And now you're breathing manually. These focus primarily on drama and the psychological <laughs> progress of characters, which will always result in you hearing this exact dialogue. Can I be selfish? Just this oh yeah, I love that. I love that shit. The selfish emoto, not the selfish emoto, but some kids like, can I be selfish for one time? Once. I know I don't deserve it. These have far more emotional moments worked into the story to make you feel attached to the characters. Then yeah. you have male romance anime, which have more. I don't mind stepping on you if you want me to. And that's the thing. I feel like guys don't know how to write girls. Because they're not girls. They have no idea what a girl that age even thinks like. These quote-unquote girls are just sex dolls created by the authors to appease a horny male audience that they're selling the product to. That's why, and I'm not saying those animes are bad, but it's just like if you think about good representation of what an actual girl might be like in real life in terms of actual romance, I guarantee you they're not going to be acting like the ones like the harem. So that's why maybe sometimes the best romance are written by women. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Sometimes the author can be a girl, but most of the times the author is a guy that writes, you know, shows like this where they make the girls into just the most unrealistic depiction of a girl that's just simply there for you, will be there for you no matter what you do, no matter how much of a loser you are, no matter how down on your luck, no matter how much you don't deserve it, they will be there to save you because that's the fucking power fantasy of these kind of shows, man. Yeah, they have more well-written characters. Dangers is made by a girl. There it is. Dangers in my heart made by a girl and Yamada is literally probably the best girl in a rom-com that I've seen where it's like they feel real they feel genuine they don't feel a static perfect character that only exists for your loser ass to again self-insert yourself as the male and feel like you can get some sort of power fantasy that's why again it's just like girl 100 kind of might my guy makes sense <laughs> makes a lot of sense gee I wonder how one the, the 100 girlfriends anime. Yeah, that makes a lot of fucking sense, bro. Redo of Healer is by a girl. Now that's interesting. Redo of Healer by a girl is very interesting. Now, this doesn't mean that every girl author, it can only make good rom-com. That's not what I'm saying. But for the most part, I think that girls know better about how girls actually act and are like. And a lot of the guys, they had the wrong idea of what girls are even supposed to be and only sees them as an object of desire. <laughs> it's easy to tell. Incest baby starter pack. Why is Ludwig getting shit on right now? There is uh, extra chromosomes, I think. League of Legends player. Alabama. Uh, My Hero Academia fans. And this is... I'm not sure what this is. I'm not it's sure. It's easy to tell if you're watching a family business anime because they're all made by the same person. Another tail sign is if the episode title... Oh shit, I remember this one. I didn't watch it, but I know when it went viral. This, what was it? Oh fuck, it's like, isn't your sister like a streamer? Edomanga Sensei, that's right, Edomanga Sensei. That shit went viral during that season, right? It includes No Way, and Love, and My Sister. But it only takes a single word to make it okay. Step, or non-existent. These all follow a <laughs> Step for non-existent. Hey, this looks like Kotori right now. Then again, so does, it's pretty much the template of all like twin-tailed girls with red hair. Hey, step. 
or non-existent. These all follow a pretty similar format. A bratty sister who lives with her older brother, and just when they look like they're growing closer as siblings, bam, yeah. they're married. But what can you what? say? He's just a family guy. <laughs> <laughs> now for character creation. Lead male characters in a male romance follow a simple format. Lead. Oh, yeah, it's Boku no Pico right over here. Grab this base template, then do nothing else. So basically, Isekai. Right? I mean, honestly, Hachiman could be an Isekai main character. Straight up. Like, I think that, like, his design. I mean, if you show me these characters and ask me, like, could these be Isekai main characters, I'd be like, honestly. Yeah, I could see them. For their personality, you have a few options. He can be a pervert who can't talk to women, a loner who can't talk to women, or the coolest person ever who can't talk to women. <laughs> All of them just exactly fucking tailor-made to appease for the power fantasy, man. Again, all of these main characters are supposed to be relatable to your loser ass that watches garbage like this. And I'm not saying these animes are garbage. I'm just saying that some rom-coms, some of these romance animes, they carefully fucking pick the perfect loser character that doesn't deserve anything, but somehow gets all the bitches. Because that's the power fantasy aspect of it, that you can delusion yourself into watching. And you know what's gonna happen? I guarantee you, you ain't gonna get any bitches after watching these types of anime. Not that you're supposed to. You're not watching romance animes to learn about romance. No, you're watching this too as an escapism. It's a fantasy. It's to exaggerate what romance could be. But watching shit like this is not gonna get you more riz, bro. You're gonna have a less understanding. You're gonna be more out of touch of what real romance is supposed to be in real life. Coolest person ever who can't talk to women. But above all, he must fear physical contact from women. I love you, please marry me. Stop, why do you want to sleep with me? I hate that. Leap men fantasy. and romance anime for women, on the other hand, are only slightly- Oh, like Apothecary Diaries, right? Like these, like the, the, bisho the Bishonen, like uh, the fucking I uh, Ikemens. Uh, lead men and romance anime for women, on the other hand, are only slightly different. <laughs> <laughs> right, just reverse the template, right? Now it's a series where it's a girl and you have a bunch of fucking conquerable like NPC princes like the Otome games, right? They're all fucking Ikemen and they say the most cringe shit but they're so hot so they get away with it. I get turned on by little elementary school girls. What?! That's crazy. Because the Japanese subs for this, it says, I'm a pedo. The OVA, Season 1 Date Alive, in Japanese, he just says that shit. But in the English dub, he literally spells it out loud, huh? That's cool. Well, at least he's not a groomer. The design for these men are fairly simple. First, give them this exact tall. body build. Yeah, lanky, tall as fuck, right? <laughs> just male VTubers. Basically, you want to think about the designs of these kind of dudes? Male VTuber models, man. Give them this exact body build. Then give them a sharp jawline, pretty face, and hair that goes... I don't think there's ever a chin like this. Girls don't like shit like this. They don't, I, well, not, I'm not saying all girls. I'm saying that the girls that watch shit like this, they only like twinks. They want like femboy husbandos. They don't want a masculine big jaw bara guy. No, 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 no. They like more of that yaoi shit. Goes down to this exact length. The personality is typically the class. Exactly this, right? Feminine look. There's no strong jawline. It's just sharp pointy chin you know it's male vtuber model that's a cold distant man that nobody mm -hmm. can get with and although he may be rich six foot in the perfect specimen he's a broken man that needs some regular starbucks loving woman like you to fix <laughs> dude he is destroying the minimum wage working girls that watch his anime is like this what the fuck Ain't no way! And you'll be happy to hear that these men actually exist, but they're all gay. <laughs> Lead women in Rome. <laughs> True! True, bro! Actually, this shit happens a lot in K dramas too. Or in Korean dramas, you have a bunch of like hot husbando guys, and they're all like super rich, like conglomerate fucking heirs to corporations, and they're so hot and cool. And the, who's the main girl? She's the most broke ass bitch ever. She comes from the fucking countryside, bumpkin ass, got nothing. And her main rival is also another bitchy girl who's super rich. But the popular guy sees the bitchy girl bully the countryside bumpkin. And they flock to her, you know, broke ass. And it's just like the power fantasy. 
the power fantasy of you being able to relate to that, you know, loser main character and thinking, oh, I could totally be me. Romance anime for men all have one thing in common, mental disabilities. Finally, yeah. some realism. Maybe she talks to imaginary friends, maybe she's Helen Keller, or maybe she smokes whatever. <laughs> she's Helen Keller. Komi ain't no way. She's Helen Keller. Or That's actually crazy that this girl's voice actor got paid more probably than some of the other characters that actually speak on this fucking anime, but she doesn't because, you know, the whole premise of the show is that she's too shy to speak, so she fucking writes it down, like Makoto from Skinichi Moon Fantasy, except he can't just speak a language, that's why he fucking writes it down, right? Or maybe she smokes whatever Nagisa was on. Needless what? to say, if she ain't collecting a disability check from the government each month, I don't want her. They also come with some built-in <clears throat> spice. Yeah. Which is being abusive because if I don't come home from a date looking like this, I don't want her. <laughs> now, unlike women, notice how abusive most tsundere's are, yes. We don't say I can fix them. That's because there's nothing to fix. And you'll be happy to hear that these women actually Ross and exist, Glock. but they're all in insane asylums. Lead women in romance anime for women, on the other hand, are more realistic portrayal. They have mm. brown hair, no huge boobs, and no bitches. Be and actual personality, right? Women depicted by women are gonna be more realistic than men because obviously they just know better. Female self inserts are hard working women with an optimistic front and definitely not looking for no man. But mm. behind their optimistic mask is a lot of hidden trauma. Carol, no! <laughs> Whoa, oh whoa, my whoa, God. settle oh down. My God. Don't go trauma dumping on me. Luckily, to make up for this, they're all empaths. <laughs> Even though he basically just shit on me and was so fucking rude, I think he's so hot. So he gets away with it. Oh my god, I want to fix him. <laughs> what the hell does that mean? It means that pretty privilege. It means that even if you're a fucking asshole, if you're hot, some of these girls are going to be like, yep, that's my man. Since characters need trauma, mangakas have no real option but to kill their loving mother, leaving their father no option but to go work overseas uh, f forever. I don't think... Yeah, so you can be alone and, you know, you can pursue the romance, you know, by living alone in a studio apartment, right? I've seen people avoid child support like this since the rat hair pirates. Just remember... Whoa, 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 Shanks. What? I'm telling Gorose, why is he here? Rat hair pirates? I haven't seen One Piece in that long time to understand the references here, but rat hair pirates? Why are they doing Shanks dirty like this? Pirates, just remember, if you can't get into a good- Shanks isn't even a dad, it's- Well, I don't want spoilers, actually. Actually, I don't want any spo- I don't want any spoilers. No, 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 no. I haven't watched One Piece in a long time. I know Usopp's dad is a fucking deadbeat, but like, no spoilers, no spoilers. Pirates, just remember, if you can't get into a good relationship, blame your parents for, um, not dying in a tragic accident. If you work for Child Protective Services, you may be wondering, how does this minor live alone? Don't worry, this is- Every minor in these romance series live alone because their rents are fully paid off by the fucking government, so that's- the population of Japan can increase. <laughs> I don't fucking know. That's an actual problem, right? Reproduction rate of Japan's going down. Same with Korea right now. So they're trying to create more incentives. All right, everyone lives in, alone in their apartments and you can bring all the bitches over and y'all can just fucking make babies. Why they have little sister. Now, these creatures are what I like to call special grade curses. They're either what? role playing stupid or really obsessed with. <laughs> role playing stupid or a super obsessed. Umaru getting shit on. This blobby girl, every time I see her, she looks so cute. But, like, everyone hates this little fucking blob of orange, bro. I don't know why. Special grade curses. They're either role-playing, stupid, or really obsessed with their brother. Either way, they'll have the most amount of dojins for some reason. The side character- For some reason? I know exactly what that reason is, and you know it too, Lunar Equinox. Fucking say it. ...may include, but are not limited to, the loud hot-headed best friend who gets no women and is always voiced by the same person in the dub. I'll bet she's really a guy in a dress. Bratty rich woman, student body president, the transfer student, usually the main character, the very hot teacher. Oh, the, the teacher is always the one that I go for. Let's go. It's not grooming if they're hot. Glasses equals intelligence. Don't worry, it's not grooming if it's hot. Yikes. But... <laughs> But that logic is pretty consistent in a lot of the anime we watch. The emotionless one, the popular girl, the person the protagonist wanted to date at the beginning, she doesn't win, and the happy upbeat one who's probably the childhood friend, they don't win either. 
<laughs> Why is it this place? Apparently people thought this one would actually win, so I drew it to avoid spoilers. Probably the childhood friend, they don't win either. But the difference is, they deserve it for having that childhood friend haircut. Since 90% of romance anime take place Kaguya in a school Sama. setting, they often follow a similar format for their And that's why Elf Bride stood up amongst the other ROMs I've seen. Because the setting is different. Finally, put me in a fantasy setting with romance and it's a lot more different compared to the same goddamn copy paste, you know, Japanese high school, middle school environment. Doesn't mean that those environments are bad. It's just that it's nice to have a little bit of difference once episodes. in a while. These situations are meant to be relatable to students in Japan. But if these took place in America, we would have sharing a romantic school lunch together, fighting off the where my hug at guy and having your first <laughs> where my hug? during a school shooter drill. How I can't relate because I'm Canadian, but is this a very American experience for you guys? However, romance anime have more exciting episodes like the Umbrella episode. Yeah, that's right. The Umbrella episode where they share and maybe one person is a little bit too out trying to protect the other one in the rain so they get wet and then they get cold and they fucking have, need, you know, and, and then there's the Sick Rays episode, right? Where they come over and feed them porridge. There's the Summer Festival episode. There's the Beach episode. There's the Hot Spring episode. There's a School Festival episode. There's the Sports festival episode there's a culture festival episode there's the summer festival did i already say that there's a new year's episode there's the christmas episode there's the christmas eve episode there's the valentine's episode there's the white day episode there's the <laughs> and it can get keep going there's every fucking romance episode it's pretty much the same shit right any sort of fucking event there's gonna be an episode dedicated towards that in Japan, girls may forget their umbrella on purpose in yeah. hopes that their crush will share his umbrella with them because mm -hmm. this is seen as a sign that- Don't tell the girl, goaded, goaded rom-com in the S tier for me. Go watch this if you haven't. If you think this is garbage, you have a garbage opinion and my opinion is a fact. That they might start dating soon. In America, the women forget plan B on purpose, which is a sign they might start dating soon. The sick <laughs> episode where someone catches a cold, yeah. but instead of a cold, it's more like stage four cancer. The summer festival episode. Yeah, the exactly. Time to get dressed up, get lost for half the episode. And then, you know, the confession scene happens right during the fireworks, but the confession gets drowned up by the fireworks and we don't have, make any progress, but it's an indirect confession. And then on the way back, the girl fucking trips and breaks her fucking ankle and it gives the excuse for a guy to carry the girl piggyback and they walk alone in silence. And that's a little bit of a makeup of the author saying, listen, I know we baited you with the confession, but here's a little ha here's a little ooh, ooh scene, man. And get your confession interrupted by fire. What I say? I know this shit. You know how many fucking romance rom-coms I've seen in my lifetime? In my old channel, you have no clue. All you see is the shitty isekais in this channel and you think that I'm just a shitty isekai guy. No, I've seen probably more rom-coms in my old channel than an isekai, bro. I've seen, I just know what is gonna happen now. This is about when episode seven hits, well, and- Summertime, let's pick a swimsuit, beach episode, pool episode, let's go. And may collectively decide. Let's go to the beach. <laughs> Let's go swimming. Not to be confused with the pool episode. Either way, mm, different location. Someone and not to be, you know, confused with the hot spring episode as well. Remember that has to be saved from being hit on, or someone must drown due to a cramp. But they must be saved by their love interest from yep. this exact camera angle. And maybe there's gonna be a mouth-to-mouth -mouth action for CPR to save the girl. The stuck step bro episode. While in the store. Wait. This. <laughs> what happened here? It's <laughs> actually implanted into the wall. I was thinking I roasted in the most recent episode with Yuki, but like this is beyond that. Episode. While in the storage room, the author <laughs> Yeah, exactly right. Stuck in the storage gym storage room happens every fucking time. The most recent uh, iteration of this is in Too Many Losing Heroines, right? It's a bit of spice. A magical force traps them inside with yep. the only way for the door to open being to get in this exact position. Found and then as soon, right? And then as soon as the buildup happens and you think, you think that there's going to be some sort of kiss in this private moment, then the fucking gym storage gets opened. Yup, happens every fucking time. This exact position. Valentine's Day. Oh boy. Time. And Valentine's doesn't mean it's just Valentine's. Remember, it's going to go to White Day as well if it's a modern rom-com. And now you got to think about, oh no, what should I get the guy? But is it going to be a giddy chocolate? Meaning, is it a participation chocolate? I need to let him know that it's more important than a participation. 
participation chocolate. I'm where all happy people get taxed. But in anime, it's a time for the girl to somehow get seriously injured making chocolate. The school <laughs> fair episode, which has two different yeah. options, either doing a maid cafe or yeah. doing a play, usually Romeo and Juliet. And tree. The hot spring. This scene, bro, in fucking this scene where the main character of Tomo-chan is a girl with a fucking tree and Tomo's dad was so impressed at his potential son-in-law's acting skills, he's like, oh my god, he's a tree right now. The immersion. Holy shit, how is he doing this? Tree. The hot spring episode, yep. where the whole episode is a build-up to the moment. Yep, just peeking, right? What do you do in hot springs? You gotta try to fucking peek. Where somebody walks into the wrong room. You, of course, have the Christmas, shrine, study mm -hmm. group, bonfire, and career path episode. Oh but my fucking god, there's just so much the same shit, right? Every fucking slice of life rom-com episodes all has the same fucking setting. And I don't mind it. I think it's actually fun just to be like, oh shit, it's the pool episodes. It's like, oh, it's a summer festival. I actually look forward to it because like it's familiarity and I find comfort in that familiarity. But how could you forget the episode with the most spice? The train molester episode. That doesn't happen quite often, but I have seen that, right? Where it's just like a guy saves the girl from getting molested in a train and it's just like a romantic moment. The train molester episode. Romance anime are filled with tropes, with one of the most common being the protagonist meeting someone who will totally not be a love interest in the past that they just can't forget. Like, dude, get over it. You were like five. But if I was still obsessed with a five- Get him out of my- Hey, yo, 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 five-year-old, come on! Get him out of here! What room? The classic walking in on somebody, because the one thing Japan doesn't have are locks knocking in HR departments. <laughs> the gaslighting a woman into day. That's right. The wall push technique, right? The wall bang technique. Aiding you by catching her off guard technique. A quick time event that if successful makes their heart beat so loud doki doki. that you think that they're going into cardiac arrest. Yeah, basically, apparently the logic, right? The logic, the actual science in how this Kabedon technique actually works is, and it's kind of the same with um, haunted house dates, is when you force the, uh, such a abrupt situation onto a girl, they get frightened, adrenaline starts rushing, but they conflate this feeling of heightened sensitivity with dopamine rush that could relate to love, and somehow they mix it up together. And if you shock a girl like this, apparently, it's, it's more easier for them to kind of just like go with what you said, which sounds kind of creepy as fuck, but that is like the science behind why this would work. Or gear fifth. Just don't mess it up. However, there are two tropes that will be in all romance anime without fail. Yeah. Accidents and misunderstandings. Oh, yep. Jumping over a fence. <laughs> Wait, what'd you say? Onisama, what did you just say? If this is consensual, then I'm out of here. I never heard that. This has this gotta be out of context. This is out of context. There's no way only someone actually fucking said this. Oh, Jumping over a fence? Sure would be a shame if you landed in this exact position. Yep. Oh no, you tripped- I'm falling onto a guy and now I'm gonna get my booba grabbed and- Oh no, kya, hentai! My panties are on your face after I fell on you. How could you do this? On the air and fell into your love interest. Yep. This is so awkward. Meanwhile, the only accident that I've been in with a woman is a car accident. Misunderstandings <laughs> always Jesus. happen due to somebody being dense, a lack of communication, or because some idiot eavesdrops on a conversation like they're playing Assassin's Creed. Now, this context. whole situation could be solved in one easy step. Bre communication. Oh, breakup. Jesus Christ! Breakup. Or talking it through, I guess. Yeah, talking it through. And what anime is the perfect depiction of an anime that doesn't talk it through? Snafu. Those... All of those kids' problems could be solved if they just fucking sat down and just talked about their feelings in a coherent manner. But every episode, they're just fucking avoiding it. They're talking in such platitudes and random references and metaphors and fucking pseudo-intellect philosophical lines. Like, shut the fuck up and just say I like you, dumbass. However, the worst trope in all of anime is when someone interrupts a romantic moment that has been built up for so long. Do you know how excited I was for those two PNGs to kiss? But here's the thing. If they kiss, then you're out of content. You can never let the confession go through. You can never let an actual romantic progression to happen. You can give subtle gestures and hints here and there, but once you give it up, you're done. While that's not the case for a lot of the rom-coms. Some rom-coms immediately start with the relationship, right? Some rom-coms are fine with showing that, but many of these other long-running etchy shows or like rom-coms I've seen, 
they seem to have this pattern of never give the audience the actual payoff. Just keep milking. It's just gonna go for like a thousand fucking chapters like Hajime no Ippo. The joy of these are the journey, not the destination, which is why things such as holding hands is so mm -hmm. climatic. And although each relation- And the craziest shit in Kubo won't leave me let me alone. In that fucking shitty rom-com, the climax was not hand-holding. It was indirect hand-holding with the little kid in between holding each hand of the guy and the girl. And, and I'm like, these motherfuckers are getting creative. They're figuring out ways to give payoff in the most, in the, in the least amount way possible. Indirect hand-holding is something I never thought possible. And although each relationship may advance at different speeds, they have similar steps. Unless they're whatever the hell domestic girlfriend was. Step 1. First impressions are crucial to set up a healthy relationship. True. Which True. is why they begin absolutely hating each other, most likely because of a Hating each other usually happens because the main character's girl interest, the main girl is a tsundere, right? That never happened with Dangerous in My Heart. And you know why Dangerous in My Heart is so peak? It's because the main girl is also an actual fucking real character. That's not a static, you know, uh, a complete character from the beginning. No. It's because she's not a fucking tsundere. You know why people hate Alia right now compared to Yuki and Masha? And I'm starting to figure out a pattern of behavior right now. All the main girls... From the beginning, it's hard to root for them or like them because they're tsundere and you can't have them be affectionate immediately. Yes, there's gonna be the rare dere moment that makes you forget about all the bitchy scenes that happened before. But for the most part, when you have a tsundere in the beginning, those are not early game characters. People like Yuki and Masha, they, thri they thrive in the early game. Tsundere's are late scaling hyper carries that can only give you that feeling that you get from the other characters once you've established a relationship with the main character. But that happens so many episodes down the road, right? It's so, so far away. That's why in Roche did it right now, Alia's getting shit on by the fans, while people are saying Yuki and Mach is great, simply because of their character archetypes and how they've been set up to work. They begin absolutely hating each other, most likely because of a misunderstanding due to both of them being stupid. This yep. is how to know who will end up together because of a little thing I call skill-based matchmaking. This is to keep the viewer engaged by adding a bit of spice. <laughs> okay, maybe a little less. What the f- What was that CGI anime? I just, I just witnessed CGI domestic abuse! From here, it either goes one of two routes. Hey, it's Either bulls. they start dating right away. This is a good anime. Bro, love after world domination. This, op this anime opening, like, I'll, I'll listen to it after this video. This is a great anime. It was fun as fuck. More calm than ROM. And it was very fun, man. Or they don't. Either way, it doesn't change how the relationship advances unless they get laid by episode 7. Step 2, the cuckening. Japanese people like being cucked. It's just simple. Well, I don't think that it's specific to Japan. I think that, you know, that fantasy exists in a lot of places. Same, same with incest, right? People think that it's, it's only unique to Japan. No, it's a global thing. But for sure, you see a lot of cuck shit. NTR, Netorare is a literal genre, right? And sometimes it's really useful in trying to advance the plot to make the main girl jealous and actually move. Right, it's Alia right now is getting jealous and Masha does something and make, you know, Alia maybe actually act upon her desires, right? So, you know, I, I actually enjoy those cucking episodes, right? Because, again, it just creates a little bit of spice and creates an opportunity. It's like a catalyst for the plot to move forward. People science. This is why they add spice. Making more people fall in love with the protagonist just so they can turn them down. Step 3. The confession. It's about to happen. They've shown each other their vulnerabilities and are finally about to confess. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, hello? What happened to step 4? Didn't you just have a lovely time? And with that, the romance anime is now- There's no step 4. Oh, over. What do you mean it's over? Do they get married? Have children? Are no, they're not gonna talk about that. Are they happy? Ooh, unluckily for you, you decided to watch a 12-episode romance anime that aired almost 10 years ago with no <laughs> chance of a second. <laughs> Better go out read the manga. Season. Now you're left reading fan fictions, maybe reading the manga that's still going. Just talk, you bet. And you'll go to sleep like you do every night, alone and disappointed. On because you, and I, I'm gonna be really real here, and I think some of you fucking need to hear this. The reason that I didn't watch Roncom for the longest time, not was, it wasn't just because I only watched Naruto, One Piece, and Please growing up, but the reason that I never watched Roncom 
was because I noticed that my friends that watched the anime when I was growing up, they loved the etchy shit. They loved the rom-coms. But they were all. They, were, they, they had no bitches. And they had a very delusional like a, a perspective on what romance is supposed to be because they've rotted their brains watching so much you know fan service rom and romance animes harem animes where again the girls are literally just written by guys to be just the fucking perfect semen demon and they have no understanding of what a girl is actually supposed to be and that deludes their romantic um they, they it deludes them of what romance is supposed to be and it, it honestly gets them more out of touch with even how to talk to girls i straight up thought that who watch people that watch this shit are just straight up fucking losers and I don't want to delude myself even if I'm so alone and lonely I would never watch this shit in trying to cope with my loneliness because that's fucking loser behavior this is truly the mindset that I had and I've seen a lot of people that only watch this shit that are still virgins that are still bitchless because they don't even know what a girl is they just think that they're just object of desires I think the perfect anime that just like goes against the grain is Dangerous in My Heart. Yamada is an actual person. She's a living, breathing... <laughs> she's a drawing! But she is unique in the sense that she is not a just like a static, complete character that exists for your lonely ass to self-insert yourself as a main character to get bailed out from your depression. This is a... I think that I'm, I'm speaking facts here. If I'm making you feel sad or uh, like um, mad, just think about why you're fucking mad because I am striking deep into your core a truth that you don't want to fucking face because you've never faced it. Disappointed. On the bright side, Mate Saman or in high school host club just got renewed for a second season. Heh, <laughs> should we watch this? I hear Aura in high school host is actually pretty good. I don't think it's my target audience, but I heard it's pretty good. Just got renewed for a second season. Heh, <laughs> look at you having hope. Stop doing that. Hello, Judge Lunar here. Yo. Click here to check out my second channel. Oh, you want a second channel? Lunar Tunes. All right. Well, that was a great breakdown of rom-com or a comprehensive guide to romance anime. Here's the video link. Oh, sorry, sorry. That's the title. <laughs> that's the title. Here's the link of the video. Please go to this channel. Like his video and sub to him if you haven't. And I'll see y'all on the next one.